Hello everyone, how's it going? So today we're going to lay the foundations to talk about organic chemistry reactions. So organic chemistry reactions, one of the many things that organic chemistry is notorious for, since we're going to be looking at mechanisms and retrosynthesis reactions. You might have seen chemical reactions before in general chemistry, but you've seen what is known as like acid-base reactions or oxidation reduction reactions, and where we might also see those in organic chemistry, it's going to be a little different since we're going to be paying attention to functional groups. This is why it was important for us to lay a foundation for different functional groups, atoms, how they bond and interact, because when we talk about organic chemistry reactions, we're not talking about generalized reactions like we did in gen chem we're talking about specific functional groups and how in specific conditions those functional groups react i actually want to show you how impactful everything is to explain organic chemistry reactions and later even biochemical reactions with the fundamentals that we learned in the past few videos in this series so for example we talked a lot about electron density and we talked about how polar covalent bond is when we have a covalent bond and the difference of electric negativity between the two atoms is so great that one atom pulls on the shared electrons more than the other creating a dipole that one region has a higher electron density giving it a partial negative charge and the other reason has a low electron density, giving it a partial positive charge. So now we have a dipole in this molecule. Taking this into account, we can look at different functional groups and know how the electron density is distributed throughout that molecule. We know that if we have a lot of electronegative elements, well, the electron density is going to be skewed towards those atoms. This is where we can lay the foundation to looking at electron pushing mechanisms. Electron pushing or electron arrows is help us represent the direction of electrons in an organic chemistry reaction. And they always start from an area that's electron rich and end at the electron sink or an area where it's electron deficient. In organic chemistry reactions, we talk about an atom that is electron rich as being nucleophilic and an atom that is electron deficient as being electrophilic. By looking at different functional groups, we can start assuming what areas of a molecule will be electrophilic or nucleophilic depending on how the electron density is skewed towards that atom. For example, let's take an aldehyde or a ketone. We know that carbon on the carbonyl, that carbon connected to the oxygen through that double bond, is electrophilic because that oxygen is pulling electron density off of the carbon through that polar covalent bond that all into consideration we can see here with this example that that nucleophile in green is attacking the carbonyl carbon because it's electrophilic for being attached to that oxygen and so when the nucleophile attacks that electrophilic carbon it's going to break the bond and throw electrons onto the oxygen and hence this is the first step in the common reaction trends of ketones now i know this was a lot to consume in one video for an introduction to organic chemistry reactions, but I wanted to show you just how impactful everything we've learned up to this point is gonna be for moving forward in organic chemistry. One thing to note is that the OCHEM reactions you learn in organic chemistry are gonna be repeated throughout a lot of science classes moving forward. Definitely the common themes such as oxidation, reduction, substitution, elimination, and more. For example, even in biochemistry, we're going to see a lot of those reactions repeat themselves, but on a way bigger scale, but the fundamentals are still in the common organic chemistry reaction trends. A quick example to prove the power of what we learn in organic chemistry is going to be important in biochemistry, look at the actosite reaction of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. We have a cysteine residue with a nucleophilic sulfur atom that attacks the carbonyl carbon of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. You see, the nucleophilic sulfur atom attacks the electrophilic carbonyl carbon, just like what we saw before. And this is what's happening in an enzyme in biochemistry. So it's really important to understand that it's not just a memorization game, it's a conceptual big picture game. That goes without saying that there are a few topics in organic chemistry that circle around memorization such as those runs regioselectivity, stereochemistry, specific reagents that influence major and minor products. But what I'm going to try to do with the information is presented in such a way is that supporting the foundations and the concepts we learn 
that memorizing these things become a little easier once we understand the concepts they're built upon. In our next video, we're going to be diving into our first trend functional group organic chemistry reaction video with alkenes. So I hope this introduction about switching from conceptual to reactions was helpful. And remember, all the infographics that you see me use in this video are for free download on my website, which is the link in the description. And I hope you guys have a great day. I'm super excited to start diving into more reactions and finding creative ways to display the information.